Amsterdam has banned all demonstrations this weekend after an outburst of anti-Semitic violence. Israeli and European leaders have expressed outrage over the attacks on Israeli visitors following a football game. Israeli authorities have urged Israelis not to wear Jewish or Israeli symbols in Europe. The Dutch government is vowing perpetrators will be prosecuted. These viral images show what appears to be a mob chasing fans of the Israeli football club Maccabi Tel Aviv. Witnesses say some of the fans were beaten to the ground, then kicked repeatedly. The Dutch prime minister called it anti-Semitic violence. Um, and I think that, uh, we have to do everything possible to track down and prosecute the perpetrators. Hours earlier, Maccabi Tel Aviv fans gathered in the center of Amsterdam to celebrate their team. But videos on social media show some Israeli fans damaging Palestinian flags hours before the match. Here, a crowd of Israeli fans chanting anti-Arab slogans as they march toward the stadium. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators angry over Israel's war in Gaza also tried to reach the stadium. Their march had earlier been banned to prevent confrontations, but a large number still turned up. Among the many videos posted online, this one shows a Maccabi fan struggling to get out of a canal as a group of men tell him to chant pro-Palestinian slogans. Say free Palestine and we go. Good. At least five people were hospitalized and more than 60 from both sides arrested. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu compared the attacks on Israelis to violence carried out under the Nazis. Israel chartered a flight to evacuate fans. Israeli authorities are now warning Israelis to avoid other sporting events and not to wear Jewish or Israeli symbols in Europe. DW's sports journalist Felix Tamsud has reported on the Israeli football club Maccabi. He joins us uh, from Berlin. Felix, great to have you on the show. Good morning to you too. So Dutch authorities are pledging to prosecute those responsible for the riots. Tell us more. Yeah, we're looking at a situation where um, several dozens of people have been arrested, uh, but there are still many, uh, many people who took part um, still being free. Um, I think there's, due to the amount of footage doing the rounds of social media, there's bound, there are bound to be more arrests. Uh, and I think we're far from uh, hearing the end of the story. Um, I think there's a lot to be clear, despite the uh, big amount of footage doing the rounds of social media, um, in terms of um, how those groups organized uh, in the run-up to Maccabi Tel Aviv fans visit uh, to uh, Amsterdam, um, how they coordinated the attacks according to Israeli media. Uh, there are indications which show the, that the attacks had been coordinated um, and um, the uh, Dutch authorities definitely have a, a mission on their hands uh, clarifying the situation and the events of the past few days in Amsterdam. All right, Felix, uh, there was um, a lot of official reaction to the uh, anti-Semitic attacks, um, but also the behaviour of some of the Maccabi fans before and after the game is also part of the picture here. Um, what can you tell us about this? Well, Maccabi Tel Aviv fans, uh, just for context, we're talking about uh, the most successful football club in Israel, sort of a local Bayern Munich, if you will. Uh, they have supporters from all around society, uh, although it needs to be said their ultra group Maccabi Fanatics is known to belong to the far right spectrum, put it this way. Um, and uh, the footage uh, shows a pretty, um, yeah, a pretty um, good picture of uh, the situation. We're talking about anti-Palestinian chants. We're talking about racist chants. We're talking about uh, uh, ripping down Palestinian flags, which had been hung up on private windows. Um, those are two things which, according to the information we have at the moment, uh, those two developments um, being on the one hand, groups of people organizing to attack Israelis and 
um, Israelis ripping down Palestinian flags and uh, singing uh, anti-Palestinian chants. Those are two things which took place parallel and according to what we know at the moment, regardless of one another. And I believe those two incidents, um, those two situations need to be treated as such um, because we have a situation where um, on the one hand, the authorities investigate the um, the uh, violence which took place um, and the footage on social media shows how both sides behaved. Uh, we're talking about two different levels, of course, uh, but at the same time, uh, the events of, of the few, past few nights in Amsterdam will definitely uh, echo with us for the next uh, weeks and months, I believe, from both sides of the story, which... Again, I believe are completely separate from one another, but again, they both have elements which definitely need to be uh, looked at with a, a critical eye, put it this way. Felix, Israeli authorities have warned Israelis to avoid other sporting events and not to wear Jewish or Israeli symbols in Europe. What does this mean for Israeli teams then who are, are traveling abroad? Well, it needs to be said that Israeli teams uh, haven't been allowed to play at home since the outbreak of the war in Gaza in terms of uh, European competition, both in uh, basketball, football uh, and other sports. Um, so Israelis are pretty much used to it. At the same time, it needs to be said that uh, Israeli football fans are, um, are, they travel a lot. They know their way around European football, traveling to European football, even regardless of an away game, just to watch, you know, big European games is a big thing among Israeli football fans. So right. this is bound to have an effect. At the same time, it needs to be said that the uh, flight situation in Israel is difficult as it is. Mm. So uh, I don't think we're bound to see such a massive effect when it comes to Israelis, football, Israeli football fans and their, their games away from home. But at the same time, the situation is tense and it bound, it's bound to remain that way when it comes to is games of Israeli uh, sports clubs abroad, definitely. Thanks, Felix. Felix Tamzud from DW Sports.